Writing book adaptations has to be hard. Sure, you're given the story on a silver platter, but if the story is boring to begin with, how do you expect to keep the audience entertained for two hours? Well, sometimes content has to be created, such as how in New Moon, they had to add the scene of Victoria being attacked because it was only vaguely described in what was an otherwise boring book. Yes, I read New Moon, it was for our class, okay, let's move on. Other times, the book can have all the conflict you could ask for, such as the mortal instruments, but the movie still comes out bad because of the execution. And if you watch the movie without reading the book, you'll never know if you should blame the movie being bad on the film crew, or if you should just blame it on the book for not being very good to begin with. The reason I am talking about all this is because it leads us to today's film and my newest installment in the book adaptation universe, Divergent. So welcome to Short to, to the Point, where I review movies in 5 minutes or less, or your money back. And ordinarily, I would tell Megan to start the review, but I gotta come clean with you guys. She actually left me months ago and for her full-time job. I'm sorry for the, the deceit and all that, but she was a popular character and I just had to keep her alive in whatever fashion was possible. Oh well, let's get started. Divergent takes place in the dystopian future of Chicago, which is divided up into factions based on personality. They are the brave, the kind, the selfless, the honest, the intelligent, the good, the bad, the ugly, it. Uh, sorry. <laughs> you determine which faction you join through means of a test, but if you do not like your test results, you're free to choose a different faction. But because the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or something like that, if you leave the faction you were born in, you can never go home again. Well, you can see your family again, you just can't live with them again. And that is the dilemma our heroine, Beatrice Pryor, faces, as she doesn't want to stay in her faction, but she doesn't want to leave her family either. That's an interesting setup, and it's even a little relatable too, as there always comes a time when we must leave home and contemplate what our futures are going to be. Only it's not quite that dramatic, you know. <laughs> the test to determine which faction you join is impressive to look at, at first. But then it becomes kind of awkward because we know as much about the test as Beatrice does. Which is nothing. The problem for Beatrice is that the test does not properly work for her because she is a divergence, meaning she does not belong to just one faction. The test giver tells Beatrice to not tell anyone that she is a divergent, because being one will get her killed, and Beatrice subsequently joins the faction known as Dauntless. The Dauntless value bravery above all, and while they seem like the faction that will reject authority, they actually enforce it. From what is never explained, and therein lies a problem with this movie. Some things are only vaguely explained, such as how the factions keep the peace, and as it turns out, there's actually prejudice in the faction, so it doesn't seem like it works either. And it also isn't explained why Divergence is dangerous for a good chunk of the film. I'm not sure if I should blame the film crew for this or if I should blame the book, but it's something that begs for an explanation early on, especially since the first two acts of the movie center on Triss's training in Dauntless. If you get a low training score in Dauntless, then you will be cast out and forced to join the Factionless, who are the homeless of this brave new world. Now I do have to give the movie its props for casting Shailene Woodley as Beatrice, because she convincingly looks like the kind of person that would be out of her element in Dauntless. And I also liked how her training is rather gradual and it doesn't happen all at once, she doesn't get good at combat over a single day, she has to work for it, and that makes her relatable without making her boring either. 
Unfortunately, I also felt like there was almost too much time spent on developing Triss and Dauntless. There obviously has to be a climax, but we are only ever given small tidbits of information that suggest that there is a larger conspiracy at work before we go back to Triss's training story. And as such, it might leave the audience wondering for a gun chunk of the film, where is this plot headed? Even if you do figure out what the main twist of the story is going to be, you're still going to have to wait a while for the movie to pay it off, finally. And as such, some people can find Divergent to be a boring story, even though keeping Triss and Dauntless is actually an important plot point. As for the rest of the cast in this movie, I was mixed on them. Triss's friends are generic, but the actors manage to make them likable, at least. And then we have Theo James, who plays the character of Four. Something about Theo's acting makes Four come across as the boring, generic guy as far as love interests go, but he does work better as a mentor figure, and the movie does manage to not make him and Triss seem like an awkward couple. Why Four is drawn to Triss is also handled in a plausible manner instead of making it seem like he's drawn to her because she's the main character, and the two of them even have some playful banter every now and then. We also have Kate Winslet in this movie who plays Janine Matthews, who was the head of the Erudite faction. The character is mostly one note, and so is Kate Winslet's performance, but she at least manages to keep it from being a boring one note performance, if that makes any sense. After a few more plot points, we finally get to the climax, and you know what? It actually improves on the first two acts. Anything that might have seemed pointless at first is the exact opposite, and we also finally get some impressive fight sequences, along with some legitimate drama. Overall, Divergent's execution was decent. Like I said, when the climax hits, the movie finally starts to come together, but it's the little things that hurt this movie in my opinion. The movie takes almost too long to deliver on its payoffs, and the main conflict is also clumsily set up. But still, there is a certain likability in this movie and our heroine Beatrice, so I give it 6.5 rebellious protagonists out of a possible 10, and I say you should see it in theaters if you are a fan of the book. If not, then wait for it to come out on demand. This has been Shorts and To The Point, and I review movies in 5 minutes or less, or your money back. Okay then, let's end things with a bang, shall we?